Well, a lot going on in politics. A new poll out, which is encouraging, encouraging for the centre, right? Uh, While the Nats are down 2 to 37, they're ahead of Labour, who are down 2 to 33. Act, the big mover, up four points to 11. The Greens down 1 to 9. New Zealand first, up 2 to 3. Winston is still lurking. And no change for the Māori Party on two. It means, hypothetically, of course, that a combined uh, act national uh, government could be formed were an election to be held when this poll was held. But uh, with every silver lining comes a cloud. And for the National Party, it's Ben Uffindel, um, the newly minted Tauranga MP. And I'm going to talk about this a bit more later in the program. It has been revealed through a source who spoke to Stuff Newspapers that when he was 16, that's 22 years ago, Ben Uffendall roughed up with a bunch of other guys at King's College. Rough, sorry, Sam Uffendall. Um, uh, Sam roughed up a third former in a raid on a third form dormitory, which is what you do at boarding school. He said sorry, apparently nine months or so ago. Um, But that's not good enough for the former third former who was left bruised by the incident uh, Sam Uffendall, meantime, was asked to leave King's College, College, presumably along with the other bullies. He says it's been with him his whole life. He disclosed it to the National Party, who selected him as the candidate, so he was upfront about it. And now, of course, all sorts of pearl clutching by Jacinda Ardern and Grant Robertson about bullying. And I'm just going to say, that's a bit rich coming from a party which gives multiple government contracts to the wife of one of its cabinet, uh, sorry, husband of one of its cabinet ministers, who's actually been convicted of violence against a female. So it seems me, to me there's something of a double standard there. But what I want to talk about first up this morning is what some are saying is beneficiary bashing by uh, Christopher Luxon and the National Party at their big conference over the weekend. It is a suite of policies designed to get young people in particular off the dole and... Uh, into work by giving them, well, some would say a kick up the bum, others would say some assistance. Joining us to discuss uh, this uh, policy is National's Social Services spokesperson, Louise Upston. Uh, Louise, welcome to the programme. Lovely to have you with us. Good morning, Sean. All right, look, first off, if we just get it out of the way, the Sam Uffendall thing, geez, that seems a long time to go back into someone's past, doesn't it? Look, I, I'm, I'm not going to, to get into that conversation um, other than to say there'll be many people who didn't have perfect teenage years. Um, Sam's clearly expressed an apology um, and I'm going to leave any, any of the rest of it for him to deal with. All right. Uh, what about that poll? That's kind of a nice flip, isn't it? It is, and that's exactly what we want to see. Look, it, it's not in any individual poll that counts. It's the it's the trend of the polls. National support is is growing and is steady. Um, Labor support is falling and dropping, um, and that gives us confidence to keep on the track we're on, um, and to keep talking about the things that matter to Kiwis, um, including, of course. Supporting young people into work. Okay, because some have some have described what you've done as beneficiary bashing, as getting down on on young people and kids. Respond to that. Tell us what's in this policy, how it works. Yes, yeah, so I will never ever bash beneficiaries. I will support people in their time of need, but give them a pathway back up. So the the, the policy that we announced on Sunday absolutely gives a couple of simple messages. The first, if you're a young person and you're out of work and want to work, greater support will be provided to you um, through a community organisation, a job coach, you'll have an individual needs assessment and you'll have a plan to follow to support you off welfare and to work. Do if those community organisations job... exist at present? Do the job coaches exist at present? Absolutely. So some community organisations use a job coaching model at the moment. Others are keen to get into it. There's organisations like Dress for Success in Rotorua that I visited last week, Topal Pathways, Vision West, 
Um, there's lots of organisations who are supporting people into employment. So these will be private providers? Of these community organisations will be private or charitable organisations rather than government they are, organisations? They are, not, they are community, not for profit. Yep. We will take it off work and income as they have not been delivering results for this group of young New Zealanders. And there is no better time than now when there are employers everywhere, all over the country, all different industries, desperate for staff. We want to use that opportunity to connect young people to jobs. OK, when you say take it off work and income, does that mean redundancies in work and income? Uh, possibly, or it just may mean that vacancies as they come up don't get filled. All right, so you give the young job seeker a, 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 a bit more help in, in terms of looking for a job. That's the carrot. Is there a stick? Uh, well, there's also another carrot, and that is uh, if a young person's been on the unemployment benefit for 12 months or more uh, and stays off it for 12 months, they would get a $1,000 bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, and the flip, the flip side is there are obligations to the plan. So if a young person is not following their plan, is not playing their part, uh, then sanctions will um, will be used. And so what are the sanctions, sanctions that exist now? So the first sanction is a benefit gets reduced. It might be suspended or cancelled. Um, or the other option that we will introduce is money management. So that basically means a young person would have less choice over how they spend their benefit with use of a payment card. All right. How many people are we talking about here? How many young people aged 18 to 24 are chronically unemployed, as it were? Uh, so we've seen an explosion, and that number is now over 13,000 that have been on the unemployment benefit for more than a year. In that age bracket? And, and in that age bracket? In that age bracket. Yep. Yep. So yeah. there's 13,000 that have been on for longer than a year. And again, what is the context? The context is there are employers everywhere who will pick up a young person, train them from scratch, mm -hmm. and take them into their workforce. So this is not an environment where there is a shortage of jobs. There is an excess of jobs. There is a labour shortage. And we've got young people that can work with a bit of assistance. Um, we can get them there. It's unfortunate, isn't it, though, that you introduce this sort of policy and the classic political or party political reaction is to accuse you of beneficiary bashing. Yep, I, I, I've come to expect it. Um, the left really don't expect um, anything different and they won't open their eyes to the real problem that young people are facing in this country. And National wants to solve that problem. Mm. How many of those 13,000 long-term youth unemployed do you think are just malingerers? Oh, look, I don't know. There'll definitely be some. Uh, and for, for that group, the message is clear. You will get help whether you want it or not. <laughs> Staying on the unemployment benefit long term isn't an option. Uh, but I think the vast majority of the young people in that group um, need some assistance. Um, they, at the moment, can sit on the unemployment benefit with an income, have a completely hands-off approach until they've been there for over 12 months. Mm. Well, we think... If someone's been on a benefit three months, we've got to get in there, provide assistance, help them on their way. How much are you prepared to spend on this? Have you budgeted it? Yeah, well, we're, we're talking $46 million, uh, which actually still is only a drop in the bucket of the work and income or the social development budget that is non-benefit um, non spend. But we want to invest in young people. We recognise for, for some of these people, uh, it will be spending more on them up front, which is the social investment approach, because uh, we don't want them to spend a lifetime on benefit. This is about breaking the welfare benefit dependency cycle. Uh, so for young people, uh, people with health conditions, might be mental health, they will take a lot of help to work. Um, but we can do it. We can absolutely do it, and we're not willing to give up on those young people. Why not do it for everyone? Well, this is, this is a group that we see are most at risk of being stuck on benefit. We know if a young person goes on to a benefit under the age of 20, on average, they will be on there for 12 years. So wow. this is about wow. breaking the cycle. Yeah, yeah, 12 years. That's not a life. That's not a life of choice and opportunity. 
And that's why our focus is absolutely deliberately on the under 25s, give them the support they need and let them get up and running and get yeah. on with their lives. Have you got more to come on this? And I'm thinking in particular of employers who might be reluctant to take on a young person who's had six or seven months uh, on the dole or on the job seeker benefit. Are you doing anything to encourage employers to give young people more chances or do you think that's not necessary? Well, part of, part of this policy is the job coach will work with the young person but also the employer. So they'll provide the pastoral care. They will help that connection. Um, so you can imagine if someone's never had a job, um, they'll have a few bumps along the way. And we want to make sure that a young person doesn't fall out of that first job um, and is supported. And the employer who's taken a risk on that young person is also, simple, uh, also supported. We've looked at this from every angle and we actually want more young people off welfare and into work. Louise, uh, is there anything that stands out by uh, ethnicity or by background about the young people, those 13,000 long-term young unemployed? Well, there's a range, uh, but actually what matters to us is you're, if you're a young person under 25 who's been um, out of work for three months and on the unemployment benefit, we want to help you get into work. Mm. Yeah, well, what I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, I can hazard a guess that a high proportion of those people are Māori or Pacific Islanders. Yeah, and there'll be some yeah, is that, is that a in yes? some regions of New Zealand. Is yes, that a yes? yes. Okay, are and you going to deliver these services through these community organisations specifically aimed at targeting those groups then? Uh, some of them will be. Some of them will be provided by iwi organisations. Uh, and again, if it's a, we want them to get results. So there are some community organisations who, who are specialised and working with young Māori, others specialise in working with young people with mental health issues. We want to make sure we get results, and that will be through the community, and that's why we've taken this approach. OK, let's set the benchmark. What do results look like in the first 100 days if National were to take the Treasury benches? What do you want to reduce those 13,000 youth long-term unemployed by? Well, I think the first 100 days is getting the scheme set up and getting some of the organisations... Um, Okay, first year. New service. Uh, well, I would. We're going to have two thousand young people in this um, initiative. That's what we're budgeting on for year one, and I would want to see the bulk of them on a path into work. Okay. So two thousand. I've you got can, to go. Yeah. Okay. I know you have. Thank you for your time, Louise Upston. There, she is the uh, National Party's social services spokesperson. So that's what a $46 million scheme to get 2,000 people into work. Oh, you do the math.